Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be talking about Windows 10 hardening, not specifically Windows 10 Defender. So if you're interested in looking at Windows Defender particularly, I've made a separate video on that, configuring it, testing it against malware. You can check that out using the link in the description. But this one is gonna be a bit more subtle about changing settings, thinking about how you should approach cybersecurity and setting up your systems correctly. This video is sponsored by MCSoft, please check them out using the link in the description. Before we get started, I think I should mention that I've seen a lot of guides on this topic and one of the things they always fail to mention is who the guide is for. Because security is always paired with availability and I think I should make this absolutely clear given that I know there'll be a lot of general people watching this video who are not in organizations who just want their home computer to work as it should. It is very important to understand that the more you change your system for security, the less available it becomes to you for use. And it's always about finding the right balance given your circumstances. So you don't wanna just go all out and max out your security at the cost of your own availability. A great example of this is with passwords, where I've seen numerous times, more often than I've seen actual password-based hacks, I've seen people screw up because they try to make a super complex password. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't use a complex password. Of course you should. That's good security practice. So it's important to understand your use cases. If you're an organization that deals with sensitive data, it's going to be very different. So keeping that in mind, let's get started with some general advice. First thing people don't talk about as much is uh, the principle of least privilege, which means that every single user on the system should have access to the least amount of stuff that they need to get their job done. Most users interpret this as admin and user accounts, which you can totally set up, and that's perfectly fine. You can do so using accounts. What often gets left out though is that Windows also applies different levels of access to different drives, different files, and this can often protect you from things like ransomware. So for example, if we go into this drive, click on properties, go into the security tab, as you will see, we've got different groups of users. We've got authenticated users, system administrators, and just users. And for each of these categories, we have different levels of control. So full control, modify, read and execute, list folder contents, read, write, special permissions. And while you can can do is you can totally change these permissions for different types of users. So for example, I have a new category of users called um, interns and I can click edit for them and go ahead and change the permission so that they will be denied, say, modification privileges. I can still grant them read privileges and that way they can access the data, but they just can't modify it. Again, keep in mind when adjusting these privileges, you don't want these to get in your way. Understand the use case for each user and try to grant them the privileges that they actually need. It is definitely a smart idea to go by the principle of least privilege. The next thing that's really critical when it comes to security on Windows is updates. Now with Microsoft, there's usually a pattern. Every couple of weeks, there's this major vulnerability and the world's going to collapse. And then there's a critical update that gets sent out on Patch Tuesday to cover that up. While most of these vulnerabilities don't actually get exploited on the scale that they could, if you are targeted by the leader of the pack, cyber criminals, you will likely be hit by one of these zero day exploits. So you wanna make sure that under update and security, you click on install or you just make sure that it's turned on and it's checking for updates. As much as you hate them, updates are essential if you want to keep your system secure. And this applies to other applications you might have. For example, Java, older applications have tons of vulnerabilities and if they're exploited could lead to major consequences. You also might want to disable some legacy features that are not really going to be useful to you. So for example, we go into control panel, programs, click on turn Windows features on or off. This gives us a list of features. As you will see, some of these are not really required. Some of them may not be unchecked by default. So for example, a great thing to disable is server message block or SMB 1.0. Especially if you're not using file sharing, there's really no reason to have this. Similarly, you might want to think about the programs on your system. Remember, every useless program is just another way for an attacker to get in. 
So you don't need to have 20 different browsers and uh, downloaders and programs that are probably going to be considered PUP anyway. Like things like that are usually a good entry point for malware. So you want to keep that to a minimum. Now going into the actual Windows security settings, as you will see, we've got quite a few things in here. An important area here that Microsoft has really solidified over the years is app and browser control. So if you want, you can actually turn on reputation based settings for files that you download. So you can check apps and files with the smart screen, which is not terrible. Actually, you also want to turn on potentially unwanted app blocking. With all of this enabled, there's a good chance that if you do download malware, especially from your browser, it will be blocked on execution. Now under device security, we've got core isolation. And if you go into details, you'll usually see that memory integrity is turned off, but you can turn this on again if you want higher security. What this is going to do is essentially prevent code injection into high security processes. A lot of times malware will try to exploit system processes like SVC host so that they can be persistent, run on the system all the time. And it also makes them very difficult to remove. Now going back into app and browser control, there's also exploit protection. And if you go into settings, you'll see that we've got a few advanced features here and including control flow guard, data execution prevention, forcing randomized for images. Now the only setting you probably want to change in here is forcing the randomization for images. If you want to do that, you can go ahead and click on on by default. Remember, after some of these settings, you will need to restart to apply them. Everything else should be turned on anyway, so you're good here. By the way, if you would like to see a more in-depth video talking about each of these features, what they actually do, let me know in the comments. I'm not going to do that here because it's just going to take way too long and there's a lot to go over. So the next thing to look at is probably autoplay. This used to be pretty big back in the day. A lot of malware would automatically execute from your USB stick or infected CD drives, and that's how they would replicate. These days, it doesn't happen as much, but it's still a good idea to turn off autoplay for media and devices. This also can prevent certain types of exploits that are going to rely on an application like a video player, for example, to infiltrate your system. The next setting is a network setting, and this is quite important as well, is under Bluetooth. So you want to make sure that your computer is not discoverable by default all the time. And in order to do that, you want to go into more Bluetooth options and make sure that allow Bluetooth devices to find this PC is turned off. Of course, if you need to connect to a device via Bluetooth, you can temporarily enable this, but you don't need to have this on the whole time, allowing pretty much anyone to find you on the network. Apart from Bluetooth as a network, there's obviously also the network that you're connected to, which might be local, which might be your internet. And that's where I think firewalls come in. If you don't have any other firewall, I would highly recommend using Windows Firewall because it does prevent certain types of attacks. However, a network based firewall is also going to be able to prevent certain CNC communication and also can't be turned off by malware. So they're definitely better in terms of what they can offer. And it's not that difficult to set one up, especially at the router level. I think a lot of routers already come with that functionality. Maybe I'll make a video on this too. But I think we've already covered enough to get started. Now, obviously, this is an endless journey. There's so many things you can do. There's BitLocker, there's different types of passwords, there's hardware-based security where you have a secondary device that you use for it. But at the end of the day, it's important to also consider what you're protecting, what it's worth, and how important it is to you. And in certain scenarios, even using Windows 10 as an OS might not be the right option. So it's very important to keep the security versus availability argument in mind keep backups of your data, try to make the event of a malware or ransomware attack less horrifying for yourself. And that way, you won't have to enforce crazy security measures where you have to first enter a 32 character password, then you have to unlock your BitLocker drive. Someday you forget your password and you're locked out of your system and you lose all your data anyway. And then you go to some tech support guy and cry. So once again, please use an appropriate level of security for your needs wherever possible circumvent the necessity for excessive security with things like backups. 
but of course if you are working in a very sensitive environment some of these tips will definitely help and there's a lot more you can do maybe we'll make another video about maximum security but for now please like and share the video if you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to the pc security channel we have a lot of exciting cybersecurity content coming up and if you'd like to get us involved in the cybersecurity of your business if you'd like to get tested evaluated or would need consulting in these areas feel free to reach out using the form on the website check out our sponsors mcsoft once again big thank you to them just click on the link in the description show them some love this is Leo from the PC Security Channel. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.